Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Gran Turismo 5. Today is episode number 20. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. Right, so today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing the German Championship now for only German cars, and we are taking the BMW M5 for this challenge. Uh, so what we're going to do, um, there are a couple of German cars like the uh, Mercedes SLS, which uh, pumps out around about 600 horsepower. And obviously I picked the M5 because I feel like, me personally, I feel like the M5 is my favourite out of all of the German cars. Um, so I picked that one, but I'm going to upgrade it to make sure we get around about the uh, same amount of power as the rest of the cars. Uh, so we're going to chuck that on. Uh, exhaust, I think we'll probably just go straight for a titanium exhaust. Like that. Sports exhaust manifold as well. We have loads of money at the moment anyway, so we're just going straight for it. Installation complete. Nicely done. Um, turbo kits. Cannot be fitted... Yeah, none of those can be fitted, which is understandable. Um, I think that is the only upgrades we can do, but with it being a BMW, it's a very heavy car, so we've got loads of weight loss we can do. We can do those there. Perfect. Uh, now what I'm going to do is chuck on uh, better tyres. I think it's got racing hards already, yes. So, I feel like, uh, no, sports hards. So, I feel like racing hards would be very good to put on this car. There we go. Installation completed. And then we're going to go to the drivetrain and just make sure everything is as responsive as possible. This is a very big upgrade. And that's cost me around about 50000 So, the entire car itself has cost me about... 175k I would say maybe 180k um, I also want to see if there's any uh, bodywork modifications or stuff like that because uh, if there is any modifications then I will um, put some of those on oh yeah it's a premium car so we can change the wheels I do feel like BBS rims will look very snazzy on this car Yes, please. BBS rims. I love BBS rims. Um, they are my favourite. Uh, so, front end. We can put a splitter on, but I don't feel like that's doing much for the price. Front canons, though, for a 1,000. Yeah, we'll fit them on. <laughs> and a big wing. <laughs> we need the meaty wang. Put on the meaty wang. Um, and the colour is very nice. I love the colour that we have. So we'll stick with that as well. Uh, updating the car data. Back to the home screen. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -ba -boom -boom. Every time I see that advert, I just imagine that um, Purina advert for the cat food. That's all I can think of with that song now. Um, so here it is, League A. We're going to be starting off with Nürburgring and then going to Tokyo for this one. Right, so we are here at the Nürburgring. We are going to be doing three laps. Um, I have also modified my audio slightly, so hopefully you should be able to hear me a little bit better throughout the race. Um, I did find it was a little bit too loud, the game audio. Here we go, though. Um, I wasn't expecting the cars to be that bad. <laughs> I was expecting SLSs. Because they are German cars. Um, I may have just been proven very dramatically wrong. <laughs> very wrong indeed. I do love the BMW though. And that titanium exhaust sounds absolutely meaty. Oh. 
I love that. I love it. Here we go. Slow me down. Perfect. Oh, we've got a little bit wide on that corner there. Nice. Come on, come on. Perfect. I don't know why more games don't have this camera angle. Because they always have... Um, they always have, like, front bumper, interior, and then rear of the car. But this one has, like, a on-the-roof camera looking down on the bonnet. And the field of view is perfect for it. You know exactly where the car is. And you can get those corners perfectly nailed with this view. Perfect around that corner there. Here we go, speed. Slow down for this corner here. Don't even bother shifting up through there. There we go. And hard onto the brakes here. Let's go around this corner. Perfect. Awesome. on the exit. There we go. Perfect. I feel like the BMW would actually look really nice in a purple. But I also do love a BMW in a silver. If you were to ask me what my favourite like German brand is, BMW would get the win. Easily. There are obviously other brands I like, but BMW wins it for me. There we go, nice, come on. Perfect. Nice, nice, come on, come on, come on. Awesome. Got to shift up. Oops. Here we go, come around this corner. And onto the brake, shifting down to second for this corner here. Throttle manage through there very nicely, shifting back down into second. Nice. Now, I don't think we're going to be doing like a 100%, like doing everything, because the B spec is just, um, it's not boring, but it's just. I don't think I could sit down for eight hours doing some of those B-Spec races because they are much longer B-Spec. Um, and B-Spec isn't even you driving like this. It's someone else driving and you control them. Like, you manage them how they're supposed to drive. It makes sense. If you watch a uh, Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec video, it would make sense. But it just... Nah. It's not my cup of tea. Come on, come on. 
come on. Perfect. And hard onto the brakes here. I have got the dual shock controller. I had to check because I couldn't feel many vibrations. Just making sure that I had the right controller. But I do. Because for some reason my other controllers aren't dual shocks. They're um, just normal six axis controllers with the motion control. Uh, but that, 6 minutes 38, very good time there. Uh, 25,000 credits as well. So I think after doing all the races, we'll get our money back anyway. So it's not that much of a problem. Right, we are here at the Tokyo R246 track. And we are going to be doing 9.5 miles for this race. Let's go, Beamer. Oh, look at that. I love those BBS rims. Again, not expecting these other cars. Like, that was a BMW F, like, 1 Series. That wasn't even an M1 there. That was the lowest of BMW's modern cars. Like, when I say modern, like, of this time. Perfect corners through there. Oh, e a little bit wide there. Awesome. We'll obviously do better on the next lap. A lot better. And this is the narrow highway section coming up now. This is a bit we have to watch out for. Because it is very easy to crash into the wall there. And we're coming on to the next lap now already. Perfect. Right, we need to watch out for this section here. Nice. And across the line, already at 163 miles an hour. So I have a feeling we're going to be going way. 170, I think that was. Nice. Nice, come on. Perfect. Look at those corners. The flow is un. Real. This is why I love this track so much, because there is so much flow between each of the corners. Like, the track doesn't have to be fast for me to like it. The corners just need to flow and it needs to feel exciting and feel like you're pushing the limits of the car. If it doesn't feel like that in a game, it's not a good track. And that's why I prefer the original tracks in Gran Turismo, because it gives me that experience. Like, with the slower play style of Gran Turismo, the fact that the cars feel a little bit slower, um, you can sort of counter that with a good track that makes it feel like the car's going faster through the corners, and the corners flow. And that's why 
the original tracks are so good in this game. Forza just doesn't manage it. It feels faster, but then it feels unrealistically fast. And that's why Gran Turismo Sport was this keeping that realism in their racing game. It's not over the top either. You're not like putting upgrades on and getting a 1,700 horsepower Lamborghini. The most I've gotten out of the Gallardo is an extra 100 horsepower. But that's enough to feel like, oh, you've got a more powerful car than the original. It's a perfect mix. Oh, that was, that was a perfect call. Too, a bit too close for comfort, but still managed to get around there very nicely. And that corner there as well was very good too. Nice. Not nice. Nice, nice. Come on, come on. Awesome. And that, ooh, very close there. But that is that championship done. The entire of the German championship completely golded out. Nice. Let's have a look. Yeah, 319,000, so that's very good. And the next championship, we shouldn't actually need a new car because we can pick... Uh, what car haven't we taken for a while? Um, I'm trying to think. What car haven't we taken for a while? That's mid and rear. I think the Ford GT, actually. We haven't taken that for a while. So I think we're going to take the Ford GT for this session. Here we go. 751 brake horsepower. I think it's mandatory to take this car at that point. Um, what are our tyres looking like, though? Which ones do we have? Racing mediums. That's good. Racing medium is a very good medium. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. Right, let's go to the Deep Forest Raceway, first of all. Right, so we are going on to our first race. It is the Deep Forest Raceway, and we are going to be doing five laps of this track. 11.19 miles, and here is our Ford GT. And off we go. Oh, we're against the Pagani Zonda. That is nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. That first corner was not great. I did not get a good line through there. What are you doing? That car sounds like a whining cat. I will say Gran Turismo wasn't great for car noises. But then again, you can't nitpick a game that I've had so much fun in. Those minor things don't really affect me. Right, we just need to try and... Ooh, very wide there. We just need to try and overtake the cars first. And then we can worry about getting fast lap times in afterwards. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Ooh. Got to slow down a lot for that corner there. Bye bye, Zonda. Is there two Zondas? There are two Zondas. That looks like a Zonda up ahead. I'm hoping it's a Zonda up ahead because I've just called it a Zonda. Yes, it is. Oh, air time. There's two airtime sections on this track. That is impressive. Nice. Am 
I do love my Ford GT. Perfect. The racing mediums are doing very well to um, withstand the power of the Ford GT. And it's not having too much of a problem with it either. Perfect. Woo! Okay. So we, we definitely have to stick it to the very far left of that jump. Come on. Whoa. Let's get you through there. Right, on the fourth lap, I'm going to aim for a speedy lap, or a fast lap, whatever you want to call it. Right, let's do this. Very good through these corners here. Perfect. good lap time there. Let's see, can we get even faster? We can. There was so much room for improvement. Uh, rear tyres are starting to get a bit hot though. So I have a feeling we are going to start trailing off the amount of grip that we have available. Because as well as when the tyres overheat, we lose grip. But as well, the durability goes down when they overheat. Um, obviously, we haven't got tyre depletion on, so it's not as bad, um, but if we had tyre depletion on, that would cause a real problem later on in a race, maybe after lap 10, because our tyres would nearly be shredded by then. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Again, I've shifted down way too early on that section. I keep doing it. Right, this corner though, don't shift down early. Perfect. Nice. Six minutes and 32 seconds. That's a very good lap time. Very good. Right, on to the next race now. Right, so we are now here at the high speed ring. And we have 12.43 miles to drive, 
but this should go quicker because the car will mostly be in like third or fourth gear for the entire of the race. Um, and we are going down, oh, we're going down the narrow section first. Interesting. Here we go, right. There we go, nice. Nice. I want to see if I can get a 105 time. Perfect. 120 miles an hour around that corner towards the exit. Awesome. Oh, oh, going wide there. Going wide. Here we go back on track. Perfect. Oh, I missed the braking zone ever so slightly there. We did get below one minute, <laughs> one minute five though, so I'm pretty proud of that. I didn't realize how much slower we were actually going, so. There we go, perfect. I love the high speed rig. Honestly, it's such a nice track. And I'm also. I don't know why, but I'm really excited for a Gran Turismo 7 on PS5. That would be awesome to see. Nice. Right, we are coming around the final corner for the second to last time. Right, we are aiming for an even faster lap time now. We're not going to get it. Why did I shift down that far?
Nice. Perfect. This hasn't quite got the same acceleration as the Bugatti Veyron does, but it is very quick, and I love it. And across the line. 1 minute 4.403. Yeah, we ruined it. We totally ruined it. Right, we are now here at the Circuit de la Sarthe. This is one of my favourite tracks of all time. One of them. Obviously, I love the main straight. It, The Circuit de la Sarthe is in my top five. I'd probably say it's like third. Oh, I nearly booked a table for two with the wall then. Nice, nice, nice. Right, slowing down for here. Let's get around this chicane as safe as possible. Perfect. We're obviously doing two laps of this as well. Um, so we'll get ourselves a second chance. The second lap is first one's going to be like a trial run second one is going to be our s speed um, and we'll work out a target from our trial run to try and aim for which will be quite a fun little game to play nice Slow down for here. Oh, shifted up too soon there. Look at the car shaking as it goes down here. Awesome. Five seconds ahead of the other cars as well. And into the braking zone. Awesome. Nice, 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 nice. Right. Perfect. Oh, very late break in there. That was risky. The braking line sort of just appeared out of nowhere. That was a very unsafe braking zone there. I sort of partly wish that um, I had the G29 racing wheel and I had a PS4 because then I could use the wheel on this and it would just be so awesome to have like a G29 wheel to use in Gran Turismo. 
Um, but yeah, I bought the Xbox One version, so... Perfect. Very nice round that corner. So I'm going to aim for a uh, 3 minute 40, I think, would be a good time. And obviously that means no mistakes as well, because I think we had quite a lot of problems with the track last time, like with the race. Let's go. I don't know why, but the difference between Gran Turismo and Forza, Gran Turismo, it almost feels like you're actually at the track. Like, it feels the way the speed flows past the car, where everything just flies past. It feels like you're actually there at the actual track. Whereas Forza has a different feel. It almost feels like it's just, um, it is just a map. And I feel like it's partially the fact that I've glitched through the floor of the uh, Le Mans track so many times that it does feel like just a map rather than actually being there. But it does. And to be honest, there is a lot of extra textures in these maps anyways like the layers of trees going through this section you don't see that in Forza perfect I don't know if we're ahead at the moment but we will find out in a minute if we are I think we've lost, we're not getting a, uh, we might get 45, but I don't think we're going to get um, 40. Perfect. Again, ah, oh, terrible. This is a good track, but I feel like the Ford just is too powerful and too heavy for these corners. Um, it needs to be slowed down a lot more, but I don't like slowing down. As you can tell by my driving style, I'm a little bit reckless. This is not what I'm like when I drive on an actual road, though. I will put that out there right now. 350. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Ugh. But there is a Lamborghini Countach there, so that is quite a nice car. I like So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with all the stuff going on on the Mechanic CG channel, then be sure to go take a look in the description for links of socials and all sorts of other places. And also, we have finally got merch down there, so go check that out. And if you want to help support the channel, hit that join button. It means the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Run for your fucking life.